The title of this video is Dividing Square Roots, or you could think about it as Square Roots of Fractions. Either way, it's going to be the same procedure. This can get ugly. If you proceed in the steps that I give you, it can be a little bit more simple. So, number one, your directions will say simplify. And what that's going to mean is that you cannot have a radical left in the denominator. Sometimes we're going to get rid of that radical very easily. One property we're going to use when we do these square roots of fractions is this. The square root of a fraction is the same thing as the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. There are times we're going to want to think of it as separate square roots like this. There are other times we're going to want to think of it as one big old square root. And you'll just have to decide which way to think about it depending on the problem. In this particular case, it's best to think of it as separate square roots. Because this becomes the square root of 25 over the square root of 36, very simply becomes 5, 6, because 25 and 36 are both perfect squares. Square root of 81 over 100, I'd like to think of that as the square root of 81 over the square root of 100, because they are both perfect squares. Square root of 81 is 9, square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 121 over 49, I'd like to think of that separately, but there's no reason you have to take the time to write it down separately unless you want to. You should be able to look at this separately and say, square root of 121 is going to give me 11 on the top, and square root of 49 is going to give me 7 on the bottom, and we're just going to get 11 sevenths. If you are more comfortable rewriting it as the separate square roots, then definitely do that. So that is our first rule. Number one, look for perfect squares. Those are the easiest kind of square root fraction problems to deal with when the top and the bottom are both perfect squares, but sometimes that's not the case. When I look at this one, the square root of 18 over the square root of 32, those are not perfect squares. But notice the fraction itself can be reduced. So this is a time that I want to think about this as one big old fraction. Reduce this fraction by 2 which gives you the square root of 9 sixteenths. Note that reducing the fraction did not take away the square root sign. It is still the square root. But the good news is these are both perfect squares. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 50 over 72. Neither one of those is perfect square, but I notice I can reduce the top and bottom by 2, giving me the square root of 25 over 36. And those are both perfect squares. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. So rule number two on this is reduce the fraction and then look again for perfect squares. So if the problems are of type 1 or type 2, they're not bad. You're going to look for perfect squares. If you don't see any perfect squares, look to see if you can reduce the fraction and then look for, for perfect squares. But that's not always the case. There's something you have to learn how to do before I actually teach you step three. And that is this rule that we listed on the front page. There cannot be a radical left in the denominator. This doesn't fit either one of our rules. We don't have a perfect square. We don't have any reducing we can do. But we do have this radical in the denominator. The only way we're going to get rid of that radical in the denominator is to multiply top and bottom by that radical. Multiplying top and bottom by that radical means all I have done is multiply by 1, because radical 2 over radical 2 is just 1, which means I haven't changed the value of this fraction. But the reason this works is because of what we learned in our multiplying video. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, plain old ordinary 2. That's why we multiply by the square root of 2. So when you do that, radical 2 times radical 2 just gives me 2. 5 times the square root of 2 is just 5 times the square root of 2. So that's what we do to get rid of the radical in the denominator. Same process here. We have a radical 7 in the denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by radical 7. Radical 7 times radical 7 just gives me a plain old ordinary 7 on the bottom. And the top is just 3 times the square root of 7. Sometimes you have a coefficient in front of that radical. The coefficient is not a problem. It's rational. It's the radical 5 that needs to go away. So we need to multiply top and bottom only by radical 5. Don't multiply by 3 radical 5. Multiplying by 3 radical 5 just makes it more complicated. The minimum we need to do is by multiplying by the radical 5. We've got to be careful with this arithmetic on the bottom here because we have the radical times the radical times that coefficient that was already there. So 
The 5 times the radical 5 on the top is just 5 radical 5. The bottom, radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. That's that 5 right there times the 3 coefficient that was already sitting there, which just gives me 5 radical 5 over 15. This 5 and this 15 are plain old ordinary rational numbers. I can reduce those. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. And then I'm left with just that right there, square root of 5 over 3. Now you might have noticed back here before you multiplied, oh, there's a 5 there and a 5 there. I could cancel those out right there and still get radical 5 over 3. So you can multiply it up and then reduce it, or you can cancel it in the middle. As long as it's whole number with whole number, it can be reduced. Radical with whole number cannot be reduced. On this problem, same kind of thing. We've got a radical 3 in the denominator that we're going to want to get rid of. So let's multiply top and bottom by radical 3. Be careful right here with this radical 3 times radical 3 because it's also going to have to be multiplied by that 2. The top is pretty simple. Radical 5 times radical 3, when the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 is still going to be the square root of 15. The bottom here, radical 3 times radical 3 is that 3 right there, times the 2 that's already sitting there makes radical 15 over 6. That's a radical. That's not. There's no simplifying allowed. Getting rid of the radical in the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator, but it's actually step four. I just needed to teach it to you now before we learned step three. So rationalizing the denominator is actually the last thing you want to do. And the reason it's the last thing is if you have some big numbers like this, do you want to multiply top and bottom by the radical 27 right here? I mean, it's perfectly legal, but the problem is 20 times 27 is going to be the square root of 540, which I would have to simplify out. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is what it says up there up for number three, simplify each radical. To simplify each radical, I've got to do a tree. These are the factors. Here's my pair of twos. Here's your factors of 27. There's my pair of threes, which is going to give me 2 times the square root of 5 for this and 3 times the square root of 3 for the 27. That's going to be my top and the 3 radical 3 on the bottom. Now I can pick up where I was before. We need to get rid of the radical 3 in the denominator, multiply top and bottom by radical 3, which is going to give us 2 radical 15. The 2 comes right on down. Radical 5 times radical 3 is radical 15. Where this 9 comes from is this. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. Times that 3 that's already sitting there is where I get my 9. No other reducing, so I'm finished. One more like that. Square root of 32 over the square root of 45. Here's the trees on both. Lots of 2's for 32. Here's your 45. On the 32, you have two different pairs of 2. So that's a 2 coming out. That's another 2 coming out, which is going to give me 4 radical 2 for that. This is a pair of 3, so it's 3 radical 5 for the 45. 4 radical 2 over 3 radical 5. Let's undo by multiplying by radical 5. Gives me 4 radical 10 on the top. And where this 15 comes from is radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. Times the 3 that's there makes 15. Here are your steps to simplify square root fractions. Number 1, look for perfect squares. Number two, simplify the fraction and look for perfect squares again. Then simplify the square roots on the top and or the bottom. And the last thing you should do is rationalize your denominator. You can do this in different order, but I think if you stick with this order all the time, it's going to be safer for you. Because if you rationalize the denominator too soon, you're going to have some huge numbers that you have to factor tree out.